Hey there, Joey from dayjobhacks.com. Today I'm gonna to talk about why affiliate marketing is going to be dead for most people in the next year or two, and how you can actually make your business last well into the future and have a high competitive advantage over everyone else. Affiliate marketing is really one of those industries where a lot of newbies come in, they think there's a lot of money to be made, which there is, but they're constantly on the rip and run kind of idea. In, in other words, we're constantly looking for what others are doing so that we can copy it and do it ourselves. And it's only getting worse and worse every single year. We have affiliate managers out there who are constantly getting information from affiliates and you know they're sharing that information with other affiliates so they can make more money and remember most affiliate managers are also people that run traffic themselves so that is one opposing factor we have ad platforms out there who are constantly trying to get us to spend more money so when they see a successful campaign and they have relationships with other affiliates they're going to tell those other affiliates the best placements they're going to say hey this is really working well over here so that's another opposing factor we have multiple ad spy tools out there for affiliates to find what other people are doing every single day so you can spy constantly finding what other people are doing you have a constant rip and run effect we have offer owners who own the actual offers who are looking to scale their campaigns they might see you having a lot of success pitching their products they're going to be looking at what you're doing they're going to see what your pages are they're going to see what your traffic sources and they're going to probably think about doing it themselves we have facebook now sharing everyone's ads you can see everything that's happening what their landing page is and everything else ongoing so how is one to survive if everybody can already see what you are doing that is what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about moat that is a competitive advantage as an affiliate marketer how can you get moat in your business if you're just the affiliate and you don't own the actual products let's talk about exact ways you can do this to make sure that your business survives into the future but first if you like this type of video please like comment share subscribe and click the little bell icon it helps me build this channel and it motivates me to do more videos like this every single week so one of the most common ways affiliates create something that most people do not want to copy is by creating a brand or content marketing, okay? Content marketing is the first approach that many affiliates go into because it is very time consuming and it takes a ton of work, but it pays off. That is why I do YouTube videos. That is why I have a blog about a topic that I enjoy talking about, okay? Day Job Hacks is the blog, and that is precisely why I'm doing these videos is because nobody's gonna wanna copy two years worth of videos to make five grand a month, okay? That is basically what I'm making right now off YouTube. I've done a video about that, how much money you make as a YouTuber. Um, so you can check that out, I'll pop that up. So if that is something you, know, you wanna strive towards is consistent monthly income, then content marketing is the way to go. You create a ton of content, you, you be an expert in whatever field that you wanna choose. Everybody has something that they're good at. Maybe you're a gamer, maybe you love games and you play games all the time and you wanna write about games and reviews on games. That is a great way to create a brand, a website, and something that nobody will ever copy. Number two is to create your own little product. And I say little product because I'm not talking about creating this big, huge, uh, operation of having support staff and getting stuff shipped from another country and all that stuff I'm talking about a small little digital product that you can sell for a very small price so that you can create your own funnels okay a lot of people do not want to go that route they just want to rip a page send traffic to the page and hopefully convert okay those are the lazy affiliates yes it makes money now but it's just constantly getting harder and harder so if you had your own little product up front where you you know ask for a PayPal payment or you stripe as your payment processor you sell an ebook for say two or five dollars whatever seven you just test a bunch of different price points get them into your funnel as a paid uh, customer and now you have this list of customers and now you can start targeting them with other affiliate offers or you can start retargeting them on ad platforms all of that stuff most people aren't going to go that extra step and that's where you have more competitive advantage
Number three is to appear like you're the actual product owner. So this actually happens when you have a lot of traffic for an already existing offer and you now have the power to go to these offer owners, okay? The people that own the offers or the networks, if you're working with the network and say, look, I would like to put this offer on my own domain because now that'll give me the ability to have an exclusive offer, okay? That means nobody else can copy this because it's gonna be mine, but it's still the back end is owned by the actual offer owner. Now this is an advanced tactic. Many affiliates do it, but these are high traffic affiliates, okay? If you don't have high traffic and you don't have a ton of traffic, don't even bother asking. People don't wanna waste their time unless you have volume and you have a lot of traffic coming to an offer. And that leads us to the next one, which is be direct as possible, meaning go to networks that are direct with advertisers, not rebrokering after you know three or four other networks. And you can tell this usually by the payouts, um, on an offer. If you go search on Offer Vault and you look for the payouts of the offers, usually the highest payout means that they're the most direct with the actual offer owners. Now, if you're a high traffic affiliate again and you already have a ton of experience or you're a really experienced media buyer, many times you can go direct with the offer owners, but I've already talked about that in another video where I talk about the risks of working direct versus working with a network. So make sure you check out that video if you plan to work directly with advertisers. Now, the next one is going to probably step on a few toes, but hide everything from your affiliate managers. Let's just remember, Many affiliate managers out there are people who either ran traffic before and didn't succeed and now they're looking for a job as an affiliate manager or they're experienced media buyers and they just want the security of having a job but at the same time at night or at home they are running campaigns themselves. Let's just be real here. Affiliate managers are looking at what you are doing, okay? So if you can hide your referrers, if you can tell them as little as possible about your traffic sources and your ads, then do that, okay? Do not share everything about your campaigns because really, People are out there watching constantly and if they have relationships with other affiliates, they may share that information, okay? If you start really scaling and huge um, and one of their friends is having troubles this week and they're not making much money, they're gonna be like, hey, Jimmy, check out this guy's campaign. He's running this and this on this, okay? So make sure you're hiding as much as possible from your networks. Now, this might not be the case if you have a really strong relationship with your affiliate manager or the offer owners, but just use uh, common sense here and make sure you understand how the information is getting out there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to establish relationships with the traffic sources. A lot of traffic sources out there have ad reps, okay? For example, I'm running traffic on MGID right now and they have an ad rep that shared with me a whole bunch of placements that work well for diet because I'm running diet right now on MGID. I asked the rep, hey, where are people running diet? They give me a list of IDs. I put those into my campaign. I set up my ads and my landing page. Now, of course, other people can probably do the same thing. I don't have much moat there just because they gave me that information. So I need to also establish some other things in my campaign to make it hard for people to copy, but it's one extra step that a lot of people aren't taking is actually talking to their ad reps and asking for these placements, okay? It gives you a quick competitive advantage over other people so that you can establish, uh, you can build campaigns faster that are more likely to convert. Next is DMCA. This is one of the services I use on a couple of my campaigns. Now it's going to protect you for the most part from you know people stealing your pages. They'll automatically tell you if somebody has ripped your landing pages. Um, you put the code on your website, go to dmca.com, and it scours the internet and makes sure that nobody's ripping your stuff. If you find something that somebody ripped, you can actually approach DMCA and they will contact the other company or whoever it is that ripped your stuff and they'll tell them to take it down. Now this is obviously, you know, uh, not 100% perfect, but it works to slow down the idiots out there who are lazy and scared and they're just kind of, you know, not really understanding what's going on. And they're, they're basically going to take down their website most times. I've only had to use it a couple of times, to be honest with you, um, because a lot of the campaigns I'm running are already putting in some other efforts, which I'm talking about next, which is list building. A lot of people aren't going to collect a lead first before they send traffic to an affiliate offer. This is a big step um, and it takes a lot of work setting up a squeeze page and setting up a, a funnel 
that then sends people to an affiliate offer, okay? Most people, like I said, just wanna rip the landing page and start running traffic. They don't wanna go set up Aweber. They don't wanna set up a free offer for people to give it to them and then you know, send people to a link in the back end. This is an advanced tactic that most people aren't going to do and it also helps you build a list and something that you can actually sell later on or you can actually make money with on your list constantly. So that is why I do list building. That is why we train on list building inside powerhouseaffiliate.com. A lot of our training involves setting up campaigns and funnels that most people aren't going to rip and run because they're just too damn lazy. In fact, we created a really simple hack. It's not really a hack, it's just a little bit of code that we use where we can start sending people to our landing pages and then once they've converted on the CPA offers that we're running, we can actually start collecting leads at the same time. So there's actually some really clever ways you can create that little competitive advantage on your campaigns that other people are just too lazy to do. The last one is understanding how optimization works. How to optimize your campaign so that you are constantly winning when it comes to, to competing against other affiliate marketers or other marketers in general. You should be constantly split testing your landing pages. Once you find a landing page that works, that becomes your control page. Set that at a, a whatever percentage, maybe 75 to 80% and constantly split test at 20% a new landing page variation constantly, okay? Most people going out and ripping and running don't even understand that they're ripping pages that have already been tested and burned out for years and months, okay? You think that you're getting this great landing page, but really the, the affiliates probably already five landing pages beyond that and testing and tweaking and constantly making changes. So that is why most people recommend if you're going to be spying and trying to find campaigns and ripping and running, always make changes to the pages, bring your own brain to the table, um, change the headlines, change the images, test your own stuff and constantly be testing ads, creatives, placements, landing pages. And that is going to give you a competitive advantage over the people that really think there's this magical autopilot affiliate system out there that just does not exist, okay? So hopefully these tips will help you create moat for your affiliate marketing business. Affiliate marketing does not have to be dead for you, but hopefully it'll be dead for everyone else, okay? Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.